the thing that gets me up in the morning and makes me still film and want to be a part of this whole thing, to tell you the honest to God truth, it's representing the companies that I skate and helping with the future generation of skaters that are coming up. People say skateboarding is fun and can't be a career and all that stuff. And true, it's fun, but you can damn straight make a career out of it. I mean, there's plenty of pro skaters that are like, you know, 40 plus years old. They could be brand ambassadors, icons, still killing it as pros. I mean, look at Jamie Thomas, Eric Costin. When you have a generation of young kids looking up to them, I mean, they are aspiring to be like that. You know what I mean? And this is no X Games, no street leagues. This is like pure professional skateboarding. That's the shit that gets me up in wanting to film is because hopefully I can aspire these skaters to have longevity and really be a part of, you know, the culture and the industry at the same time. Josh King is laying down the freshness. Too many, too many tries. Too many, too many. You got the crowd of yas behind that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm originally from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Let's say it looks like this. And here's Detroit. Grand Rapids is here. Chicago's here. So, I was 12 years old when I started skating. Because I remember it was the summer between the sixth grade and the seventh grade. And I had to mow lawns to get my first real board, you know. My first board was a Steve Caballero blue graphic with the Bonite. And then I fine-tuned my first year of skating because my, my mother lived in New York City. So I would go spend summers with her. There was like more freedom because I didn't have the greatest skateboarding support, you know, living with my dad in Michigan. But when I would go to New York, she was just kind of like, by, you know, so I would just meet up with some guys and we thought we were exploring the whole city, you know what I mean? But really we were only going like six blocks around Queens and when we went, I wanted to go downtown and skate when, in any city I was in because that's where the skaters would be. I'm not sure where that came into my life, but it was literally like the more people I'm surrounded with, even if I don't know them, but they're, we're doing the same thing, that was the fun, you know? And the stuff that I related to most was like the early uh, Embarcadero stuff. For me, there's, Mike Carroll can't look any better than when he's skating in Barcadero. But when he's skating like some random thing over here, like it doesn't affect me like it does when I watch him skate in Barcadero. So that was probably one of my biggest influences ever to this day. All that, just yeah. for that. <laughs> Dude, I hate it when you do that. Man. The following year, I remember the New York kids used to make fun of my ollie because I would ollie, and this is when you, you took the bolts and you flip them upside down, and we were wearing Vision Streetwear shoes and like the nuts were on the top of the grip tape, you know? So you, it, would, it would like grab it and bring it up. And I used to ollie and then boom, like just land really hard. And they all used to make fun of me, like, why you gotta stomp your ollies like that? Because they would be all floaty, you know? And I'd just be like, bam! And they used to clown me for that, but I didn't care. I mean, it was just the way I skated. Go winner! Josh Galen! Look at him go! Yeah, Josh! Yeah! By this point, I was in it. That's all I did. That's all I could think about was just skating nonstop. It, it, it even infected my school because I would skip school to go skate or, you know, I would, it, it, everything was just skating my whole life. Big problem I've had growing up was like anti-authority and I always wanted to follow my own rules. You do that in front of the girls, man. So my dad got a job transfer from Grand Rapids to Rockwall, which was like a way north suburb of Dallas. And I, since I lived with him, you know, I was making the move, but he shipped me over to Woodward while they moved. And Woodward's where I met like Vinnie Ponte and Jeff Pang and Tony Mag was there and we were filming some stuff. And the footage I got at Woodward was the stuff you see in 8th Street's Lick video. And it was pretty special because it was after hours. You know, we would just skate, cause I was a camper. So I was just doing whatever I had to do during the day to skate what I could. 
based on whatever rules and guidelines they had. But they invited me to skate after hours and film a couple of things. And, you know, that's where that footage came from. So when I did go to Woodward and I did hook up with Tony Mag and got free boards, like obviously I was super excited, but it wasn't like changing my program on how I felt about skating, you know, because skating to me by this time was like, it was my lifestyle, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a job, you know, now I just get free boards, I get to do what I want and I don't have to like hustle to get boards. And then from Woodward, I went to visit my mom and my mom moved from New York City to the suburbs of Philadelphia. So that was like my first introduction to Philly. I remember on, on that trip, I met a couple guys, Matt and Pete were their name. And uh, they always, they'd always skate the suburbs and I just wanted to go downtown and check it out. And so finally we went after they made fun of the way I say downtown forever and ever. We went down there and first place we went to was love. And it, it wasn't even really skated. Like, I remember I met Roger Brown that day. Like, I kind of fell in love with it right then. And I, I don't know why, it was just like, damn, the place is sick. So I'd always get Matt and Pete to drive me. But then I had to go back to Texas and um, met a couple guys at the skate park there, the Jeff Phillips Skate Park. And they were kind of on the same mentality as me. Their upbringing was very similar to mine. You know, in school and in my neighborhood, I was a minority. You know, and then where they were, they were the minority. So we all got together and we were just like, hustle every day to eat and skate. And it was one of the raddest times of my life. But I had huge problems in school there because I'm wearing huge pants that are cut off below the knee, ultra baggy polo shirts. I mean, we were kind of crazy looking at skaters, you know? So I go to the school and I got bleach blonde hair and fucking crooked hats. And the football team is just like, who are you? And it was like day one, they're making fun of me and I wasn't gonna get made fun of, like, you know what I mean? So I instantly am fighting these guys. They're dropping my pants in front of people. I'm punching them as hard as I can. Dude's like not even phased by it. It just didn't work. So like that school, I had to leave it. And that didn't sit right with, you know, my dad especially. And I had to make that decision right then and there, you know, and I, I made the decision. There's an opportunity for me to go live down in Dallas, my homie's house. It was, you know, full of cockroaches and the, even the street was called Mayhem Street. You slept with Raid right next to you because it was just like, you know, shooting the bugs. You open the dishwasher, it's like bugs. But that shit didn't matter to me because I was with my dude and we would wake up and we would go skate and like, it was hell of fun, dude. It was like, seriously, skate life, because all we did was skate. At this point in my life, it took like a drastic turn because even though I wasn't with my dad, I was still like, you know, I still had my room in his house and I still had my stuff. We had a big falling out. And shortly after that, he had hired some people that came and scooped me up and brought me to this facility which I always thought, you know, was a mental institution style place, but what it ended up being is a, a, a crisis prevention center. But his insurance company wouldn't cover it after six months because I wasn't doing drugs, I wasn't like psycho. It was just a big misunderstanding because my dad didn't understand what I was doing. And when I got out, I wasn't sure if I missed my opportunity because when I tried to get a new skateboard, the folks at A Street were like, they wouldn't send me any more boards. I was like off the flow list. So I went back to Philadelphia and started staying at my mom's house. And that's when I met Stevie and Rasul and Terrence and Jason. And that's when really we started skating love. And at this time, like dudes were already skating it. Like Ricky Oyola was there, Matt Reason was there. They had a little crew that was skating there every day. But this is the love park that everybody would dream about. This is the love park that you didn't get kicked out. Like if you went down and skated anything surrounding love, you'd get kicked out, they'd tell you to go to love. And even though I was doing my own thing, there was like a little bit of separation of the crews. The main crew was, you know, Ricky and all his guys. But Stevie and everybody was way younger. They just do whatever the fuck they want. They don't even listen to these dudes, you know what I mean? Because I was on the side that didn't listen to authority and didn't listen to rules, and we were, like, we looked at them as being, like, kind of corny. Cool. 
I left and I was gone for a while, dude. I was like, after I left, I lived in Michigan, Dallas, San Diego, because that Dallas, after I left Philly and then Michigan and went back to Dallas, like that was the Dallas trip Jamie came. Chill, good. Last try, too. <laughs> Come on, go ahead. Go on that side of it. 